Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to welcome each and every one of you this morning and you that are viewing us live this morning. We welcome you to For Whosoever Will Ministries. We are located here at 3310 Florence Road in Colleen. And our service is at 1045 on Sunday and at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. And we welcome you to come out and experience, amen, a mighty move of God. And so this morning, I'm going to ask the congregation if put your hands together to welcome those that are watching this morning. Amen. Let's give them a applaud this morning. Amen. God bless you. Welcome. Hallelujah. As we're getting ready to go into the Word of God, I pray that whatever has offended you this week, amen, that it will not follow you into next week. Whatever you've held in the past, amen, it has to let you go. You cannot keep living in the past, amen. It's like a ball and chain around you. All it does is it slows you down. And so as we go in the Word of God this morning, I'm going to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, amen. 1 Peter chapter 5, and uh, I'm going to start with verse 6. If you would uh, stand this morning for the, amen, the honoring of the Word of God as we're going to be reading it this morning. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him because he careth for you. Verse 8 says, be sober or be cautious. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist, let me say that again, whom resist steadfast in the faith, Having knowledge or knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10, but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while. We don't want to read that. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. You may be seated this morning. As I was reading the Word of God this morning, as I was as I was taking a moment to be able to digest this right here, he took my mind on a, on a safari. He took my mind out to where there are ones who pay great amounts of money to go on safari just to see the wild animals. They want to go out there and see the, the lioness and the lion. They want to go out there and see the elephants and the giraffes. And they want to see all, of, you know, uh, all the animals out there. But also I found out this. What they don't report many times is when they go on safari, sometimes ones, watch this, sometimes ones are attacked by the lion. There are ones that have lost their lives. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because they didn't fear them. Yeah. They didn't respect their territory. So when you go into the enemy's territory, when you go into that, that male lion uh, territory or that lioness that has the little kittens, uh, understand this right here, you are a threat. And, and I will say this, that's the reason that the Bible tells us that when we go out into the world, we go out as a threat. Yes. The reason we're going out as a threat is because we stand for the value of truth. We stand, amen, not to give in to the false statements of man. We don't, we're not going to allow ourselves, amen, to where we're going to agree with the world just so that we, uh, you know, on the job that we're not going to, uh, you know, they make fun of you, all oh, you Christians and all this. But no, the value of truth, amen, that is promoted through the Word of God is also, amen, is promoted through creation. And so I, I want to take a moment this morning as we begin to go through the Word of God and begin to understand, amen, what it is that Peter's trying to tell us right here about, amen, the devil, his character, amen, and his aggressiveness toward the body of Christ. And so think it not strange that the world hates you, Jesus said. He said, don't think it's strange. He said, because before they hated you, they hated me. Amen. And so we understand this right here. Amen. Every human being, Christian and non-Christian, understand this right here, is created in the image of God. And so what happens is, oh, Lucifer himself, he sees you in the image of God, and so that makes you an enemy. It makes you an enemy of Satan. It doesn't matter if you're out there, amen, you're a high roller, it does not matter if you're a CEO, it does not matter who you are, you are an enemy of the devil because 
You remind him of God. And it was God that cast him out of heaven. Amen. It was God that took his position away from him. And so in this right here, we have to understand that when you wake up in the morning, amen, you better be dressed for battle because there is a battle that's going to come against you. Amen. Today. So if we look right here, I, I, I want to uh, give you some uh, I want to give you some information here this morning. Amen. If you'll just kind of uh, stay with me. It says, uh, how does a lion catch its prey? It says, lions stop their prey and when close enough, attempt a, sh a short charge on their prey. Now, I want to stop there a minute. The reason they want to, get, the devil wants to get close to you, the reason the enemy wants to get close to you, a male lion does not, he does not have a, a, a long distance. Uh, he, can't, he cannot hold up uh, more than maybe 50 meters. He overheats. He gets hot and he has to slow down. So he wants to get within a close range of attack, amen, before he pounces on you. That's the reason he stops you. That's the reason he wants to know your weakness. He wants to know, amen, what is it that makes you angry? What is it that you don't forgive? What is it that you're holding against somebody? And so he begins to see this. He, he wants to hear you talk about the pastor. He wants to hear you talk about the church. He wants to hear you talk about your, your boss. He wants to hear all this right here because what he's doing is he's going to attack your weakness. And he's going to make sure he can put somebody in your face that can push all your buttons at one time. Anybody got somebody like that? I mean, you can wake up, have a great day, but they can push that button and all of a sudden it just flips you that fast. I mean, you are, you are blind, raging mad. And that's what the enemy says. I want to take you out. I want to make it to where you cannot be Christ-like. I want to bring you to that place to where, understand this right here. We don't get even, we get ahead. How many ever heard that? Amen. Hallelujah. So when we see this right here, it says that he goes after you because what he wants to do is destroy you. Now, it says right here, do lions feel sorry for their prey? Remorseful behavior is rare in animal kingdom because lions and tigers do not hunt for pleasure. They do so out of hunger and instinct. All predators in the animal world have a prey drive that activates when they see a member of he said, of the prey species, yeah. fixating, stalking, chasing, and killing. Yes, sir. So that's what they're looking for. And when you see them, they're looking. They're just watching. Is there a weak one, a lame one? Is there one that cannot stay up with everybody else? And that one begins to lag behind. And that lion says, I'm patient. And... All I'm going to do is get my distance. I've got to get my distance because I'm going for the kill. The rest of the herd's moving on, but there's one that's straggling. That's the reason that the Bible tells us, amen, that we are to pray one for another. Amen. You that, are, you that are strong, the Bible says, bear up the burdens of those that are weak. If you have a weak brother or weak sister, then it's up to you to minister to them. It's up to you to help them, amen, to keep them up so that the enemy cannot destroy them, so the enemy cannot take them out. When ones are talking about them, amen, you're walking with them. You're walking with the one that's weak. You're helping them. You're setting up that spiritual, amen, fortress around them, and you're saying no weapon formed against them is going to prosper. Say you cannot touch them, for the word of God says you start speaking the word around them, Amen. And how many know this right here? In religion, there's been way too many that have been destroyed in religion. Amen. There's way too many, amen, that have been pushed aside, pushed out. Maybe you didn't look right, walk right, dress right. Maybe you didn't do this or something. And, and you know what? The church said, hey, forget you. Maybe you don't need to be here. You need to belong to somebody else. No. And you get discouraged. You don't want to go. Maybe you're one that watches TV. You say, all them preachers want is money. That's all I hear is money. That's all I hear is money. So it turns you against God. I had one come up and ask me one time and said, is it true preachers just want money? I said, is it true you want money? They said, well, yeah. I said, why do you want money? They said, well, to pay my bills. Uh, and not only that, I'd like to have a new car. I'd like to have a new house. I said, well, understand this right here. God, God's willing to give you new money. But I said, well, have you ever thought about going back to college? Have you ever thought about getting a better job? Have you ever thought about doing something you've never done before so you can receive something you never had? And they looked at me and they said, no, uh, I just want God to give it to me. I said, understand this right here. He did. He gave you time and talents. Yes, sir. Use your time and talents wisely. Amen. So 
as we look at the Word of God, we find out that what God is telling us through, amen, through Peter right here is that we have to all the time beware. Beware of who it is that's giving you wisdom. How many have ever had this right here said to you, if I was you, this is what I would do. If, if I was you, I said, well, you're not me. Understand this right here. And if it works so well, how come you're not doing it? Amen. You ever thought about that? And so what happens is we get in the Word of God. And, and we see in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you have knowledge, or as for as much as you know, that your labor... Is not in vain in the Lord. He said three things right here. Be steadfast. Yes. Be unmovable. Amen. And always abound in the work of the Lord. How many know that we have to. We got to show up for practice. Amen. Before the game. Amen. amen. If you don't show up for practice before the game. Then you're not a player. No. And so when we look at this right here. That's the reason we come to the house of God today. We come here because we need to get the we need to get the play calls. We need to know what God is wanting us to do this week coming up. It means we got a spot where the enemy is. And in this right here, we got forward observers. That means that we've got to look out and say, hey church, listen, I'm gonna give you a warning right now. The enemy's wanting to come after our children. The enemy's wanting to bring in fentanyl. The enemy's wanting to bring in these drugs across the border. They're wanting to do all this right here. We need to ward. We need to warn our children that right now that there are things that are happening out in society, amen, and let them know that, listen, you may think that you're out there taking oxycontin, but that, that, it may be just uh, fentanyl, and it may be the last thing you ever take. The reason I'm saying that right now in junior high, they're targeting junior high kids, they're targeting elementary. They want to make it, it look good. How about uh, fentanyl now that looks like Skittles? Yeah. Oh, it's just candy. But then the mama or daddy gets a call and says, your child, your child just passed away. Yeah. How could that be? How could that be? Yeah. Because there's somebody that wants to give them that, that drug. They want to be able to start getting them on it where they can make a little money on it. And the reason I'm saying this, we the church got to be steadfast. We've got to, we got to warn each one. We've got to warn our children. Amen. We've got to tell them there are sites on the phone. Don't go on there. Last year, and you can check this out. 300 and I think it's like 330,000 young teenagers in America were taken into sex slavery. Get your mind wrapped around that. 330,000. Might have been more. And we're going, how? And it's because of the internet. It's because they go on there and they're chatting with the wrong one. And then they go to meet them and they're never seen again. Or maybe that teenager, that teenager said, I don't have to put up with this and I'm sick and tired and everybody telling me what to do. And they run away from home and there's somebody to understand. They understand you, baby. Come on, I'll, I'll, be, I'll help you out. Mom and dad never see that child again. Why am I saying this? Because we, in church many times, what we want is we want to feel good. We just want that soft message. Just tell me how wonderful I am. Amen. Tell me how anointed I am. Amen. Just, you know, just go ahead and give me the fluff, which will be enough for me. But then the preacher gets up and says, hey, listen, get the fluff. It's not enough. Get it out the door. Let's get some education back in the house of God. And let's begin to understand, amen, that there is an enemy out there that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10. 10. But Jesus said, listen. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have life abundantly. How many want that abundant life? Not that life full of stress and problems and, and all this. You want that abundant life. Well, let me tell you, the abundant life only comes through the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, what he did for us and what he has for us. He'll give you peace in the midst of trouble. He'll point out and say, hey, don't go over there. You know why? There's a lion over there. 
There's a lion over there. And what he, he's crouched down. You can't see him, but I know where he's at. And he's stalking you. He's watching you. He's moving around. And he's seeing your attitude. And what you need to do is you need to get in some praise and worship. Because that will chase that demon off. That will chase that devil off. When you begin to praise and you begin to worship God in the midst of your uh, situation, watch and see what happens. Darkness has to leave. Why? Because the light of the world just stepped in. Darkness cannot control light. But light can control darkness. Amen. Come on. Give God glory and praise this morning. Hallelujah. Now when we look at this right here. He said in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Here we go again. Stand fast. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again or trapped again with the yoke of bondage. You know what he said? Don't let the enemy put that yoke of bondage on you again. Don't fall back into that same old attitude. Don't, you know, don't get that Charlie Brown attitude. Why is everybody picking on me, you know, and all this. No, understand this right here. It means that when you're standing fast, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep me until that day. And so when we begin to stand up, we begin to make that kind of statement. What we're saying is, yeah, there's going to be times I cry. There's going to be times I get angry. There's going to be times that, you know what, I'm going through sickness. I'm going through the loss of a loved one. But in all this right here, my eyes are focused on Christ, His Word, and what He did for me at Calvary. And through all this right here, amen, I'm praying my way through it. I'm praying my way through it. Amen. Uh, someone asked me one day, how are you doing? I said, I'm praying my way through it. Amen. Well, how, how are you doing? Each and every day, just... How do you think I'm doing? Come on. I said, I'm praying my way through it. I'm not camping in it. Amen. I am not depressed. I have, I've had depression come on me. Amen. Anybody lost a loved one and you had to go through some depression, you had to go through, amen, some of those thoughts that come in your mind, uh, amen, as to why this person died or, you know, could something been uh, done that prevented it. You go through all of this right here. But then I got into the Word, amen. And when I got into the Word, and I'm going to show you what happened, amen, I got into the Word and I began, I began to take and meditate on the Word. And I went to Psalms, amen. Now watch this right here. Psalms chapter 34. Behold, bless you the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. And when I read that, I said at nighttime that represents darkness. That represents the hardest, the hardest time of your life. The darkest time of your life. When all of a sudden, guess what? All that everybody has to say and all the prayers and everything that they're doing. Amen. It's kind of distant out here. Because you are right now in a place that you, can't, you just can't hear. It seems like noise and static. But you want to hear the voice of God. You want to know everything's going to be all right. I turn on the radio when I'm driving, amen. I turn on 65, amen, the message. And I mean, I crank it up. If you ever pass me, you're going to hear my truck, amen. I love praise and worship and I'll just be, why do I do that? Because I don't want to hear static. I don't want to hear noise. I don't want to hear all this out there in the world. I want to hear some praise and worship that is going to encourage me, amen, to stand fast. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. So in this right here, we get to the point where we ask ourselves, am I where I should be for the years I've been saved? Wow. When I was working, amen, in fact, it is back when I was in the military, yeah. I used to ask myself this question. Am I, am I satisfied where I'm at or do I want to get promoted? All right. do, I really, do I really want to just stay at this level or do I want to go higher? If I want to go higher, there are things I need to do. There's a deeper uh, desire for education. It means with this right here, that listen, I've got to go places I, I normally didn't want to go. When I was doing SOG, Special Operations Group, and we were going different countries, amen, and, and I would leave my wife and my family back home, and we were going out there. And no, and I couldn't tell them where I was going. I couldn't, I couldn't tell anybody. But it was during those times, amen, that we had to be so focused, we could not allow anything to distract us. I couldn't have my mind on my wife. I couldn't have my mind on my children. I couldn't have my mind on anything but the mission. Amen. And so anything less could make me a casualty of war. And so I came to the place where I said this right here. I want to go higher. You know why? Because the higher I get, the more I can influence on the soldiers to be not the best they can be. Be the best that they ought to be. Amen. Because sometimes we're satisfied where we're at. 
We're satisfied to just come to church. We're satisfied just sitting in the pew. We're satisfied to sing a few songs, turn around, sit down. We're satisfied just going back home, turn on the TV, watch your favorite football game, you know, and cheer, get loud, throw popcorn, you know, and just make sure that you stay in the spirit, amen, hallelujah. And, uh, and so, but with this right here, it comes to a time that you gotta say, am I satisfied? Am I really satisfied? Or can God use me more? All right. Can God do more? Yeah. You know, I came out here the other day and, and we came out here to do the yard and everything. Had a wonderful time. And uh, Deacon Preston was here. Amen. And we had uh, Brother Byron here and myself. And we just had a great time. Amen. And, and Brother Byron's wife was in here. Amen. And she, yeah. I came in. She in here just doing the vacuuming and everything. And, and you know, it, it really made me proud. It really did. Because I, I'm a firm believer. You take care of God's house, He'll take care of your house. Amen. I believe that, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, what happens, amen, is we're saying, Am I satisfied, amen? Or do I want a label, amen? Just give me a label, amen, uh, right here so that people can look at it. Oh, wow, let me just touch you. <laughs> no. Or somebody that's a worker for the, for the kingdom of God. That's right. Now he goes on and he says right here when, we, when we're in the Word of God, we're, we're looking at the scriptures that encourage us, amen, to be the, and not to be the victim. I've said this. Don't ever be the victim. Don't be the victim. When you're out in society, amen, don't be the victim. Don't go in places you, that you know you shouldn't go. Amen. I've seen so many that are victims, but you look at the area they were in and why, why are you there? Amen. There was a precious lady, uh, sister here. She's going to be with the Lord. I was talking to her. She was at Walmart in, in, in uh, Copper's Cove. And she just was coming out to her car. And this individual began to stalk her. And I had told in the church we were talking about this. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, there is a distance that you have to protect. There has to be a man, there has to be a field around you that is within your uh, ability to protect. And I said, when somebody gets into that, that distance right there, they get into that field, they can harm you. So this, this individual is stalking her. She, she gets to the car, she reaches in her purse, and she told this, this individual, she said, you are now in my area of protection. She said, if you dare to come any closer, she said, I will take and end your life. He turned right around and he left. Just, I ain't messing with her. And she said, I said, would you shot him? She said, I didn't have no gun. <laughs> but how many know that attitude right there probably saved her life? Because there was an individual wanting to go around, amen, and rob people, take, take some money, give me some money, give me your purse, whatever. But she said, I won't be a victim. I said, what else could you have done? And she said, you told me, take my keys. Throw them as far as I can. She said, throw them as far as I can and start screaming loud as I can. Draw attention. Understand this right here. The enemy does not like attention. The enemy does not want somebody that is going to stand up, get loud, amen, and take a chance on being caught. That's right. These are things that we, we need to bring up in church. Don't be a victim. Amen? Hallelujah. So as we look at the Word of God, I want to keep going right here. And we see that in the Word of God, it says that, well, let me take you down right here to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, see, seeing you know these things before, seeing you know these things before, beware, let me say it again, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, Fall from your own steadfastness. That's good. He said, beware. Be on guard. Yeah. He said, because you know what? If you listen to a lie long enough, you'll believe it to be the truth. Amen. If somebody quotes a lie long enough, then generations will repeat it. Yes, sir. And we see that, you know? And so what we find out here is the, uh, the, uh, Peter is saying right here in uh, chapter 3 and verse 17, 2 Peter 3, 17. He said, you... Therefore, beloved, or child of God, seeing you know these things, or you have knowledge of these things, he said, before, 
This is before something happens. This is before the enemy can attack. That's good. You already know your surrounding. Amen. He said, you've already been looking around and said, I can't go there. Yeah. You know what I said? Understand this right here. This is for me. Yes, sir. I said, I'm one cigarette away from going back smoking. <laughs> Just one. Yes, sir. I said, I'm one drink from going back to being an alcoholic. That's right. I'm one word from going back to being the ugliest cussing person you ever saw. Yes, sir. So I have to guard against this. Amen. I have to guard against this. When, when, when I'm out and everything, there are, amen, it used to be when I had first quit smoking. Understand this right here. I would not go around anybody that was smoking because I didn't want to smell it. Yeah. It was familiar. Yeah. Stay away from that which is familiar, which was your downfall, amen. And don't get saved uh, 90 days later, and I'm going to go to the bar and I'm going to witness. No, sir. Let's no, stay I away know. from it because yeah. that was your weakness, amen. Yeah. And so I had to make sure in all this right here. Once I used to run with in the military, we go out there to the NCO club and everything else. I had to stay away from that because that was the lion that wanted to destroy me and take me down. I was the one that was going home on a Friday night after I got off work. Yes, sir. Had a big old Chrysler in the mountains of Tennessee. That's the place where they turn a snake loose and they built the road right after it. Oak trees, huge, all the side of the road. Every one of them scarred up. That's where vehicles had hit them. Lives were taken. Yes, sir. I was going home. I on that road, and I've been drinking. I was doing about 100 miles an hour. Wow. There's a little hump in the road. Anybody know that little feeling? Woo -hoo! Yeah. Black ice on the other side. Ooh. At 100 miles an hour, I'm going down the road, two lane highway spinning around. And I think I invented the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. I'm going down through there, and somewhere during this time, it seemed like slow motion, but I'm saying, God, if you keep me from dying, I'll never take another drink as long as I live. When, I, when the car stopped, I was facing the other direction. And God, I felt in my spirit, what God was telling me was, which way do you want to go? Which way do you want to go? I slowly got the car turned around. I went on home. That was the last day that alcohol ever touched my lips. Because God saved my life. And I knew this right here. If I did it again, and I went out there, amen, and that line's out there waiting for me. That line of alcohol is out there waiting for me, amen. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about, amen. Anybody here been delivered, amen, or, or you've had incidents that you should have been dead, but God kept you, amen, and through this right here. And I said, if I go back out there again, then the enemy gets within that killing range, I can lose my life. I said, God, I'm aware that I need to get rid of this. I need to stop it. That's the reason I minister like I do. Amen. And I say, you know what? If you're drinking, stop. Amen. If you're smoking, stop. Amen. If you're doing weed, stop. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know why? Come on, because it's going to destroy you. Yes, sir. Oh, it makes me feel so good. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you what, what it does to your body. That THC, oh, let me get out of this. We got too many going, oh, yeah, uh, okay, hallelujah. But he says right here, he says, you know, you got to understand. Uh, Job said in uh, chapter 17, verse 9, the righteous also shall hold on his way. And he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. What can they say about you? I go down to the graveyard. I look at headstones. I see when you were born, and I see when they passed. But in between that is the whole life history. I was going down through the graveyard. In fact, for days, let me uh, go back on that. I was I was preaching a funeral, and this this elderly sister, she was probably about ninety, came up to me and she said, after I got through preaching, she said, "Come here, come here, come here." I said, "Yeah." We went walking down there, and she said, "This is where my husband's buried." 
And I looked there, and I mean, it, the ground was just covered with whiskey bottles, shoved into the ground. Just, I mean, she said, everyone that he ever drank, I saved. And she said, when he died, she said, I told him, every bottle that you drank, he, he, his liver was gone, his heart was gone. I mean, just destroyed him. And she put every one of them out there. Just, I mean, just lined them up, lined them up, lined them up. And she said, I want everybody to know this right here. That was his lion. That's what killed him. That's what took his life. And she said, he was a good man when he wasn't drunk. He was a good man, a good father when he wasn't drinking. Said, when he went to church, he... He, he raised his hand and everything else. And, and I mean, he had a great time in church. And everybody thought that, hey man, this guy's got it going on. But as soon as he got home, he said the first thing he did was he went and got his buddy Jack or Jim and started drinking and became mean. And she said, I asked the pastor one time, said, Pastor, what do I do? And this is what he said. He said, start praying. She said, oh, I've been praying. She said, he said, no. Pray that the next drink he takes will make him so sick he'll never want another one. Amen. Amen. She said, <laughs> she said, I went in my bedroom, got down on my knees, and she said, I started praying. She said, Lord, I'm praying that the next drink he takes will make him so sick that he will never want to see another one again. She said, next morning, he started drinking. Said about 10 o'clock, she heard him in the bathroom. And he was in there talking to Ralph. Anybody know who Ralph is? Come on, amen. Y'all ain't been saved all your life. Hallelujah. And so she said he was sick. Just, I mean, just even got to where he's throwing up blood. He came out and he said, if, if I ever, if I ever take another drink again, I believe I'll die. And she said he stopped drinking. And she said for a period of about three years, said God turned his life around. I said, all them whiskey bottles, all that that laid out there and everything else. She said, his body was already destroyed. Yes, sir. Said, his liver was already gone. And said, but God gave him three years. And said, before he died, he told her, I want every one of those put at my grave. I want everyone to see them and know that, listen, it may seem like joy and pleasure at first, Amen. but death will come in the end. He, he, he's in heaven. He gives his life to the Lord. But you know what? That line of deception, it took his life. And we know that consequence comes. Regardless, amen. You have consequences that come when you make the right decision. You get rewarded, amen. And when you make the right decision, good things happen. But when you make the wrong decision, consequences can bring some bad things. And so the word of God tells us, Stand fast in your faith. When temptation comes, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, get away from me. I've had it many times. I, said, I just plead the blood. I said, I plead the blood, Jesus. I plead the blood over my mind. I put on the helmet of salvation this morning. Amen. A soldier does not sleep in their LCE unless they're in a combat situation. But when they're not, they take it off, they lay it aside, and then when they get up, they have to put it back on. I said this morning, I put on the helmet of salvation that protects my mind. Amen. I want to be one that can bring somebody out of bitterness and to being better. I want to bring somebody out of anger and bring them out of this place of, you know, to where that they hate and bring them into the joy of the Lord. I was speaking with a, a, a sister yesterday and we were just speaking a little bit. And I, next thing you know, I had her laughing. She's just laughing and, and, and everything else. And I said, you know what? This made my day. Up at the VA, I have them old men up there, they're mad and old Vietnam and all this, no sad. And but by the time I get done, they'll be laughing. I said, that made my day. And I said, so what happens is, us as men and women of God, we've got to stay away from the pain and the pity. We've got to stay away from all that right there. Yeah, somebody did you wrong. You think you're the only one? Yeah, society wasn't fair with you. But you think you're the only one? I said this right here. When you push through and you keep on struggling 
And when all of a sudden as someone said, you make it to the top of the mountain, don't start throwing your hands up and, and claiming victory. You know why? Because you got two valleys, one on each side. And there's going to be some problems. There's going to be some more sickness. There's going to be some more death. There's going to be some more disease. So get yourself ready. Just say, you know what? God, I made it to the top of this mountain. Now help me make it through the valley. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. It is your rod and your staff that comforts me, that takes and protects me. And so as we look at this right here, we see what he is saying in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up your loins, the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the re revelation or the revealing of Jesus Christ. Wow. You know what he said? Look toward the end because we win. No matter what we've been through, no matter how many times we fail, no matter how many times we messed up, when we come back and say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for my flesh. Forgive me because I wasn't patient. Forgive me because I wasn't in the fruit of the spirit. I was in the fruit of the flesh. I need to get back into some peace, some love, some joy, patience, sound mind. I want to get back into where I can stand strong. Amen. And watch this right here. I'm already looking at my field of caution. I'm already looking to say that, listen, this is what God has given unto me. And I have to protect it. I have to constantly uh, look out and see where the enemy is. The enemy is constantly trying to come against each and every one of you. He's trying to come against me. He's trying to come against all of us. But what he's doing is saying, where's the weak one? Are you the weak one? Are you the weak one? Are you the weak one? Am I the weak one? What he's saying is this right here. I'm going to find the weak one. And when I do, and I get within your range of protection, and you have not been on the word of God, I'm going to launch. And when I spring, that one paw of that male lion, I forget how many pounds per square inch, but can literally take a full-grown buffalo and crush its skull. One, one slap. Down. But in the spiritual realm, he says, I'm going for your head. I'm going for your thoughts. I'm going for your joy. I'm going for all of this right here. And you know what? In the end, I win. You lose. So church, I'm saying this. Let's keep our eyes Keep our eyes focused on Christ. Let's keep standing. We hear today that, listen, they're wanting to throw it out there to us to say, listen, it doesn't matter what the church thinks. The fact of it is, and I want you to hear this, that uh, there, was a, there was one of the senators that was on television the other day, and this is what he said. We already have, he said, we already have a bill that's going to be reenacted. He said, this bill will shut down the churches in America. We already have it. And the only reason he said we're not presenting it right now is because of the election. He yeah. said if it wasn't for that, we want to we want to bring this bill. Give it to Congress, bring it to the Senate, and then to enact on it. If you say anything that is of hate speech, if you say anything that is against transgender, We'll shut your church down and we can take your pastor to prison. Wow. Come by, yeah, huh? So we look at it and ask ourselves, are we ready for this? Are we ready, the church of the living God, are we ready for this? Many times we can't even get up and get, get to church, let alone stand up in the spirit. What do we do? What do we do when we can't meet here? What do we do when they shut down the, the technology that we try to send out in home messages? What do we do when we are like China and Russia and North Korea and Venezuela and some of these others where we have to go underground? And then when we do, we're not singing like we sang this morning. Our singing is a whisper. Can't anybody hear us because you know what? They're going to pay if somebody will turn you in. Yes, sir. And that's some governor. You go and turn your neighbors in. Mm -hmm. 
didn't wear a mask or whatever, we'll rest on. This is America. America. God has shed his grace on us. We've been so blessed. But understand this right here. Freedom is only free as long as you can protect it. And that's where we're at today. Standing fast. Churches are dwindling at such a rate they can't even calculate it. Pastors are quitting, going back to uh, jobs that they held before because they cannot, they just can't stay with the church. If there's no, no way there to support the church, it closes. All these businesses you see out there that are uh, in bankruptcy or all these out there in foreclosure, it's because nobody was buying their, their goods in church. We have to stand strong. Let me ask you about your neighbor. Are they saved? Let me ask you about your co-worker. Are they saved? Do they know you're saved? Amen. Because if they don't, how are they ever going to see the light of Christ? We have to stand strong. And when all of a sudden that they're telling about, oh, you don't see what I did this weekend? What did you do so interesting? I'll tell you what I did. I went to church. Oh, yeah, church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was raised up. You know, I had to go to church and everything else. So as soon as I got old enough, I ran and said, no, I'm not doing that no more. Yeah, now you're out there. How's it working for you? You see what I'm saying? I've been there. You know, I told somebody, yeah, I was on drugs. I'd been drug to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. I was drugged to church out there on Saturday to mow the yard. My mom and dad were deacon, deaconess. I was ready to bring a sleep bag and just sleep in church. We spent more time in church than we did any place else. Why am I saying that? Amen. As soon as I got old enough, I was last to and I'm gone. Yeah. But how'd that work out? I know. I'll tell you, it didn't work out good. I was like the prodigal son. I got to the hog lot. Anybody here? Amen. I got down to where I was so far down, amen. It's bedrock. The I, I, only place to go is up. Amen. If I can be, go back to my father's house. Yes. Come on, somebody. We made it back to our father's house. Amen. We made it back this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give him glory and honor this morning. Hallelujah. If you'll stand with me this morning, bow your head. After we pray, and you'll be dismissed, amen. But the altar is going to be open. If you need prayer, amen, we'll pray over you, anoint you, amen. If you want a fellowship, please, out in the foyer, we're asking that you fellowship, amen. Respect those that are at the altar. Is that okay? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that as we are right now standing, that, Lord God, that we're scanning, we're scanning right now, spiritually scanning, and that area that you've given unto us, that area of responsibility, it is our responsibility, Lord God, that we are responsible to look out there. Where is that lion, that roaring lion, the devil, as he goes about and he's seeking who he can destroy us in John 10.10. 10. That, Lord God, that we warn our brothers and sisters that we're constantly saying that, Lord God, we're not letting him break that perimeter. We're not letting him come through, Lord God. That what we're going to do is speak the word. We're going to keep some praise and worship going. That, Lord God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. That, Lord God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you that we're going to continually just be putting out there the word because we know the enemy cannot stand the word. The enemy cannot stand the truth. And, Lord God, when we stand upon the values of truth, we know that, Lord God, as a coward, he will run. And I thank you that you, you showed us that, Jesus, when you were in the wilderness, that he tried to tempt you, and you were hungry, and he said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And you said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so this morning, the word has fed us. The word has instructed us. The word has covered us. The word, Lord God, has emboldened us that we can stand forth and that we go forth. And may this week be a week of victory. Lord God, we're going to see some battles, but we give the battle to you. 
you. And we thank you that when we come back, that Lord God, we'll come back with praise. We're coming back with worship. We're coming back with testimony. We're coming back to say, I should have been taken out, but God in his word preserved me. And I'm here to give him glory. Now, Lord, we give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And let everyone say amen and amen. Give God glory one more time in the house of God. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, amen, we will anoint you, pray over you the prayer of faith.